Siamo qua via come voi e stiamo a fare le Vital Revolt Theresa May. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I join with the Prime Minister and everyone across this House in sending my heartfelt condolences to Her Majesty the Queen on the death of His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, and our thoughts and prayers are with Her Majesty and the whole Royal Family. There have been many tributes in recent days to Prince Philip, some from those who knew him well, some from those who'd barely met him, some from those who'd never met him, but whose lives he had touched. I had the privilege of meeting him and having a number of conversations with him. He was a truly remarkable man, a man of so many talents. We've heard some of them referred to already today. A distinguished naval officer, an inventor, an innovator, a designer, a painter, a sportsman, and so much else. What always struck me when he spoke, when I was having those conversations with him, was not just the incredible breadth of interests that he had, the wide range of interests he had, but the depth of knowledge that he had in each of those interests. He didn't just dip into a subject. He didn't pick something up because it was fashionable. He was deeply interested. He cared. And he understood the importance of getting to know the issues that he was involved in. He was indeed a man ahead of his time, particularly in the areas of the environment and, and conservation. But that wasn't a passing whim. He deeply loved the natural world. He understood nature. And he was passionate about wanting future generations to be able to enjoy and benefit from the natural world too. And I remember on my first visit as Prime Minister to Balmoral that Prince Philip drove myself and my husband around the estate and talked to us about the estate. It was as if he knew every single inch of it. He talked about the ancient Caledonian forest, about the birds, many of them protected, about the animals, about the plants on the, uh, on the estate, about the changes he'd seen over the years, and about what was needed in order to ensure that this environment could be protected and could be enjoyed by future generations. He was indeed a man ahead of his time. He showed, again, his deep knowledge, but he was also an immensely practical person. And he was a man of high standards. That did indeed come through, through his attention to detail in the cooking of the meat at the Balmoral barbecues. But I also remember an event which was hosted by the then mayor of the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead. It was a black tie event. Prince Philip was coming down from Windsor Castle for probably no more than half an hour. Now, some people would have said, well, you'll have to take me to find me. I'll just turn up and I'm there and that's it. But he didn't. He dressed immaculately in black tie. He took the time and trouble because he had high standards, but also because he respected the event and the people who were there, and he wanted them to be at their ease. Now, I've mentioned Balmoral, and I remember my last day at Balmoral, my husband and I, as everybody knows, enjoy walking, and we were able to do some walks there, and Prince Philip very kindly suggested a particular walk to us. So we were very grateful for this suggestion, and we set off. When we got back to the castle several hours later, <laughs> we were told that Prince Philip did indeed enjoy this walk, but he normally drove around it in a car. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was a test, and if it was, if we passed it, but, uh, but I also remember on my last visit, when I went to say my farewell, and, and initially we couldn't find Prince Philip, and eventually I caught up with him, he was watching the cricket. How I would have loved to have stayed watching the cricket with him. Now, I, of course, am a Berkshire MP, and in Berkshire we feel a particular connection with the royal family, and Prince Philip set up the Prince Philip Trust Fund which provides grants to individuals and causes in the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead. And many of my constituents will have benefited from funding from that particular trust fund. And among the causes it focuses on are young people. And this is reflected, as others have said already, in the Duke of Edinburgh's awards. It is one of his particular legacies that he had this passion for enabling young people to find themselves, to challenge themselves, broaden their horizons, develop new skills, for some life-changing new skills, and millions across the world have much to be grateful to him for. But perhaps the most important aspect of his life was his absolute commitment to supporting Her Majesty the Queen. 
I know it is in no way comparable, but I know how important it is to have a husband, a partner who is a source of strength and a rock in time of trouble. As a hugely talented person, Prince Philip could have been enormously successful in his own right, but he put his life to ensuring the success of his wife. It was that willingness to put himself second and to serve, to understand the importance of duty and exercise it day in and day out, that will be his true lasting legacy and which should be